Malawi is indeed a very beautiful country. Looking at the vegetation, the mountains, the lake, the different animals that we have, the birds, the flowers, the sunset and the sunrise. People have always appreciated Malawi as a, a very beautiful country and the people of Malawi being very warm, which adds to the beauty of the country. The Loud County Council Malawi Committee was formed in 2006. Our comfortable lifestyles here made us think of those less fortunate than ourselves. We chose Malawi, a country not unlike Ireland in South Central Africa, not only because of existing links, but because of its poor rating in the World Poverty League. I have been involved in trying to solicit funds, not very much at a bigger scale, but at a smaller scale, but even what I call small is very great and big to the communities. We have really stuck ourselves to the basic needs, which are food, water, proper housing, and education. These are the areas that we have tried to concentrate ourselves on. They are helping uh, in, in, in real dire situations, in, in, in situations which are the most needy you can, you, you can you can think of in this world. So they are helping the really the, 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 the weakest of the weak. This country has suffered a lot from HIV AIDS problem. And one of the contributing factors, if not the main one, is poverty. Health services are a problem in the sense that there are not many medical facilities like hospitals or health centers. People have to walk long, long distances to get to the hospital. So unless they become very sick, they will not go to the hospital. So for that reason, one of the first projects we chose to assist was a health center in an area close to the capital, Lulangwe. Yes, we have our donors in Ireland and um, Count Louth County Council is one of our best and biggest <laughs> and, and most supportive, I must say. You started by building a HIV testing unit for us and that has really blossomed and a lot of people come. We had 3,300 and something last year. Then we got some bicycles for the volunteers and also bicycle ambulances. Now the bicycles for the volunteers, they go into the villages, they visit the people who are sick in the villages, they find out who the orphans are, they do a lot of work that way and come back and report. Then the bicycle ambulances, as you've seen, our roads are terrible. So a lot of the time, women don't reach us in time in the maternity because there's delays. Delays because of no transport, the terrain is very rough, they have to walk for miles. Now these bicycles, they can get on the bicycle and come in. So it's, it's really time saving. So that has really meant a lot. Malawi hasn't enough money to sustain itself. It needs donations from outside, like we did in the 60s. Without the European help, where would Ireland have been? So I see Malawi pretty much like that, that we do need help as well. That is one thing I find about them. They can have very little, but they can celebrate so well. You know, we in the developed world have, have got into the habit of needing plenty of money and plenty of places, but so simply, they can, they can really enjoy themselves. And I like that. A lot of money has been put in this country 
to help people get educated as regards how to avoid contracting HIV AIDS. And we think that if more of that is done with concentrated effort, the situation should be able to improve. Without education, a lot of the development you'd hope for would not take place. And the same thing in trying to educate people of, of how to protect themselves, how to avoid getting AIDS. You need that education which is formal and you're able to read and write. We see education as very important for the development of Malawi. Therefore, we decided to fund a school in a place called Karunga. As you have seen, St. Mary's Girls is one of the oldest schools. I think you can see the old blocks there. And we happen to have a very critical a problem in terms of classrooms. The condition was very pathetic. The walls were blackened, all rafters were rotten, the floor had a lot of potholes, and the windows were just very big. So you can see, very, very pathetic. But through Father Chinura, who initiated to find some funds from you, from Ireland, we have uh, built one school block and a head teacher house. The head teacher's house is, was very odd and in a very critical uh, condition. But with the help of your fans, here we are. We have a very good uh, head teacher's house. So for that, we thank you very, very much. However, we still have problems because the number of learners, number of pupils here is just very big. There are about 1,509 pupils. For example, the block you have assisted us, we have standard 7A and standard 7B. And standard 7A, there are 192 learners in one classroom and seen that 7B, 164 pupils in one classroom. And these pupils are taught by only two teachers. We still request you, if possible, to assist us with more, more and more classrooms. We thank you very much. May God bless you. Thank you. The school is, of course, by name St. Mary's Boys FP School, uh, Box 13, Karonga, Malawi, Central Africa. It has 1,292 students. There are 15 classrooms. The highest enrolled class is Standard 4 with 192 students. It has a catchment area of close to three kilometers radius. We have quite an amount of repairs needed to the classrooms, starting with the floors, to the windows and the roofs. The weather at times gets really hot and also gets really cold at times. And then all we need is if we can have the windows closed and the doors closed, that would assist the students from the harsh conditions of the heat and the cold weather. There are quite a, a number of classrooms, about three of them, which need urgent repairs on the windows and the roofs. Because we had some wind, strong wind that blew off the roofs and did not have them repaired up to date. In most cases, it's the parents' contributions that 
support the uh, repairs and some constructions. If we can get the funding like our friends from Ireland, it would assist us heavily and would be very thankful for the repairs done to the classrooms, for the learning conditions to be conducive for the learners. Thank you very much for coming and thank you for your assistance. The committee which, which have responsibility for, for raising the, the, the funding and, and subsequently distributing the monies meet on a, an infrequent basis. We meet when it's necessary to make decisions. We can meet monthly or indeed sometimes every two months. And the group which are made up of staff of the organisation explore the options that have been presented to us, the, the type of projects that are seeking funding, and then we make decisions based on what we believe to be priority and need. And through people like Father Ryan, Father Charles and Sister Mary, we get to learn of the type of contribution we're making and we continue to hope that it's a positive contribution and we also commit to continue with our contribution and the work of the committee will remain as long as the need remains. At one of our first meetings, Charles Chinula told us that he could feed a village with a plough and an ox. The Laos County Council Malawi Committee has generated a lot of funds and some of those funds have been directed to my own village. And I'm very happy to see the progress that has been made in, in the area of development. People there are very happy with what the, the funds have done to their lives. Um, they have had enough food over the years because of the funds that were injected into farming. A good number of families have now, are now living in good houses that have galvanized roofs because of the same assistance. They also have a piggery in the village where they hope to get the piglets and they have raised their own pigs for proteins and for sale for income. At first, they helped us with the supply of piped water. Then on building on that, they assisted us with the grinding meal, the, the maize meal, to grind our maize and also to make the flour for our food. Yeah. <coughs> You have also seen the four uh, oxen, plus the ox cart with which they assisted us to help us in tilling the land, but also bringing our harvest from the gardens to the barns. We also have plows to use for tilling the land with the oxen. They are in the, in the shed somewhere, two plows. You also assisted us with the push bikes to help us in transport. When one of us gets sick, we have to ride the same bicycles to get to the hospital. Adding to that, you have helped us with the showing machines. And here are the women who practice and have learned how to make their dresses. We are very thankful for that. To crown it all, we are very thankful for your coming and for all the assistance you give to our village and to the people so that they uplift their standard of living. We are very thankful and we wish you well.
from the very beginning, there has been a tremendous community spirit. No matter how little they had or have, they will share. And there's a great caring spirit within the community. People got together themselves, they formed a committee, they organised themselves, and they came to me looking for help. And I didn't know where to go to, except I came to Laut. And so Laut provided 6,000 euro, and with that 6,000 euro, they built a beautiful block of two classrooms. The reason why this school started is just because we have schools around here, but they are very far from the place here. So uh, the pupils being very young, the community opted to say, we open up a school so that uh, those young uh, pupils who cannot go into far places, at least they should find a place where they could get education. So hence the school started. What the community did is simply to mold bricks. Then it was towards the end of or mid of last year, that's when Father John Lyon came in to say, um, at least with the bricks that you have molded, uh, let's have a, a block that should be built. Uh, the school has just started with standard one and two. But it is our prayer and hope that this school has to grow up to standard eight. Generally in Malawi, primary school starts from standard one up to standard eight. But this one being a junior primary school has just started, started with standard one and two. We hope by next year it is going to continue with the standard three and it will be going on and going on. It is our aim to build more classrooms at Forstina. It would be a shame for these children to start primary school and have to leave after two years with nowhere else to go. In short, I should say thank you for your coming and thank you for the support that you have given us. We hope the relationship that you have developed is not just going to end here, but it will be a continuous relationship. Uh, thank you once again for your coming. Uh, and visiting our school. As well as education and health, one of our other big priorities is to provide clean drinking water for as many people as possible. And one of our most recent projects was the drilling of a borehole in a very remote area of Malawi. I do come from uh, northern part of Malawi in the district of Muzimba, under the village headman Chituzu Nyirenda. The particular village is known as Mubu village. I was born there, I grew up there, and there's no clean water in that village. These people literally had to walk a long, long distance to a water point, a well, which had very dirty water. Even with your eyes, you could see that this water is dirty. And most of the time, people suffer from abdominal pains because of that bad water. As you have found this well, we are very happy. You show this well, the water, that this is the water which the Chituzu people were drinking. Now, 
When you drill that borehole, we shall be very glad. And the work has been very easy, huh? very simple. So we thank you greatly. Thank you very much. <laughs> It will completely change the lives of the people and uh, this will bring civilization to the village. People were very joyful and you could see from their dancing and singing and urulating that they were really happy and this borehole will be a lifeline of the people of this Chituzo village. They started from there, looking for water, all over here at this village. Uh, they didn't find any up to this point here, where they say there is enough water that they will drill, which villages from around this place will come and enjoy the water here. Malawi is a country that is very rich in water resources. Our funding put in place the drilling rig to drill underground to find this water and to place a wellhead and as a result we are delighted that the people of the area now have clean drinking water all year round. On my own behalf on behalf of uh, my brothers and sisters, my uncles and my ancestors, are uh, very thankful to what the Irish people are uh, doing in order to assist us. Who are we to have such friendship? So we, we, we feel very humbled and uh, uh, we cherish uh, the the gift that uh, is coming to our village. Education of girls in Malawi really has been very slow. Probably slower because of our cultural backgrounds. Our cultural background, normally it's very uh, oppressive to girls. The church too has realized that uh, if you empower women like in the Malawian culture, then you have empowered the society at large. And that's why even the church has this drive to create more girls' secondary schools. There's another project which is way up on the Tanzanian border, way up north, and in a very, very remote area. It's a girls' secondary school. This is another area where Laut County Council have given big help. I would say that that school would not be possible without the help of Laut County Council. The aim of opening this school was to actually cater for the girls' education in the district because there was a high dropout rate for most of the girls because of early marriages and early pregnancies. Where the school is located now, it used to be a parish and uh, Father John Moyo thought of establishing a girls' secondary school. We built up a committee and with that committee we started soliciting some funds from the locals. The committee members themselves started contributing. Then the parish contributed, so we started renovating the odd place so that the girls could use it 
as hostel and maybe classrooms on the other side. Lucky enough, there was um, some Irish donors, and uh, they helped us with, uh, uh, I should say, 2.5 or more million Malawian kwacha. 2.5 million kwachas is approximately 11,000 euro. This money built a brand new classroom block, giving the students the best environment for learning. <laughs> A new hostel has also been built to house the students. Unlike the previous cramped conditions, they will have excellent facilities. Simple things like shower cubicles for privacy and bedrooms that aren't overcrowded, which most of us take for granted. Other projects are at the foundation stage, but we need more funding to implement these. We are far from uh, the bigger settlement like Chitipa, so we don't have many houses where our teachers can learn. So as a result, that is a big challenge. The government has offered us 19 teachers, but we are failing to accommodate them because we can't take them because we don't have teachers' houses. I want the people who give us the donation for this secondary school that they are not doing it in vain. I'm very happy, I'm very excited about it and I'm very grateful to all the people who are helping uh, the school to develop. And this school in this rural area is the only girls' school and without it, the 180 girls there would not have a future. I want to be an ace. Because most of the people they are suffering from many diseases, so I would like to be helping them.